The lives of Iowans changed forever in a matter of minutes. And all our ears got plugged in. We were, that's when we got more scared and we knew it was on top of us. Many spending the last six days cleaning up wondering where to go from here. I'm not the saddest because I know that this can be like rebought, rebuilt. And that hope, resilience, and selflessness of Iowans is what we want to show you tonight. Even through midst, you know, even through all the devastation, there still remains a lot of hope. This is a KCCI 8 News special presentation. Iowa Storm Recovery, restoring hope. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stacy Horst. Tonight we are bringing you this special because so many Iowans have been through so much over the past week and we want to make it easier for you to help the people who need it. We have a list of organizations all across Iowa on KCCI.com, our KCCI mobile app or on the QR code on the bottom right hand corner of your screen that you can scan with your smartphone. That will take you to a list. You can help people across 12 counties who are now picking up the pieces. In all, the National Weather Service says 13 tornadoes touched down in Iowa, as far east as Scott County, as far west as Adams County. The smallest tornado traveled over one-tenth of a mile. The largest started in Madison County and traveled 70 miles. It was unlike anything Iowans had seen in nearly a decade, and recovery will take time. The tornado that killed six people Saturday was an EF4 with winds as strong as 170 miles an hour, up to 800 yards wide and on the ground for nearly 70 devastating miles. That car, he's turning around. He's like, the National Weather Service says the tornado first touched down southwest of Winterset at 426 Saturday afternoon. The tornado headed northeast, hitting more than 50 homes in Madison County alone, killing six along Carver Road. KCCI Storm Chaser captured video of the tornado as it crossed over Interstate 35 into Warren County. The tornado continued northeast, damaging homes on the edge of Norwalk. It ripped apart homes on the southeast corner of Des Moines near the Highway 65 bypass and Army Post Road. And it just kept going, crossing the Des Moines River, churning across rural Polk County, damaging and destroying homes between Pleasant Hill and Runnels. The tornado pushed into Jasper County, crossing Interstate 80, damaging the Valley Drive-In. It finally lifted into the clouds just north of Newton at 6.01 p.m. One hour and 35 minutes after touching down, taking lives and changing others forever. We want to focus now on the area that saw the greatest loss of life. That's a stretch of Carver Road near Highway 169 south of Winterset. KCCI Cynthia Fodor tells us of the heartbreak and heroism in Madison County. The damage along this winding country road is jaw-dropping. On Sunday, Sky Aid captured the devastation less than 24 hours after the tornado passed. By Monday, Carver Road was covered in several inches of snow, another cruel challenge for families already facing the most difficult moments of their lives. Their house was right over there in kind of that black dirt area. The family of Rodney Clark was here on Monday, seeing the spot right where he lost his life. Pole. It's the same place where Rodney's final heroic act saved the life of his wife. She called him inside, and my grandma Judy told me that she was trying to get him to uh, lay down first in the, uh, in the bathtub, but he laid on top of her and, like, held her close. Uh, and pretty much saved her life. Farther down Carver Road, the heartache is multiplied by four. Four members of the same family killed while hiding from the tornado in a pantry. Melissa Baisley died. Her husband Raymond survived. But three other members of the family died, including the couple's son-in-law, Michael Bolger, and his children, six-year-old Kinley and two-year-old Owen. Michael's wife, Curie, and their eight-year-old child, Bryson, survived. They were visiting their grandma from the Kansas City area. For us, it's just a unbelievable tragedy that, you know, half of her family is gone in an in instant. 
Cecilia Lloyd is the final person who lost her life along Carver Road. Her husband, Tom, survived and was released from the hospital Thursday. Tom's family says that while his wife, Cecilia, is gone, her kind spirit lives on through him. He has been talking about how he um, just knows there's a purpose for him on this earth, that there's a reason he survived. So much tragedy along one short section of Country Road, a small section of land showing the deadly power of a tornado. And that was Cynthia Fodor reporting. Now, there are dozens of people in rural Madison County who lost everything. But one thing they still have is their sense of community. The storm hit just three days before Winterset High School sent its boys basketball team to the state tournament. At a pep rally Tuesday, which also recognized the first responders who worked night and day since the storm hit, we met Addie Burkett, a cheerleader for the basketball team. Her family's big blue house was torn to shreds, their belongings scattered over the rolling hills. But somehow, her cheerleading uniform was found a half mile away, and all it needed was a cleaning. Covered in debris and dirt and mud and all that stuff. One of my friends washed it for me and she did a really good job because it's not stained or anything. Competition took a backseat to compassion. Winterset first faced Marion at the state basketball tournament. Ahead of that game, the Marion boys came together to raise money for the folks in Winterset and Madison County. In all, $10,000 worth of gift cards was donated. They just arrived in Winterset this afternoon. While Winterset beat Marion in overtime, their state championship hopes were dashed after a loss to Dallas Center Grimes last night. The Van Meter School District, just 18 miles down the road from Winterset, also held a fundraiser to help their neighbor. $3,000 worth of gift cards will be donated from that effort. Owners of a popular Winterset farm will rebuild after the tornado tore through much of that property. The Pepper Harrow Flower Farm was flattened. Owners Jen and Adam O'Neill say they were setting up for their son's birthday party when they got the tornado warnings on their phones. They hunkered down in the basement as their property took a direct hit. Our ears started popping. It, I thought my eardrums were going to explode. It was so powerful. It, sucked the oxygen out of the room. It was, uh, it was an unbelievable experience. The O'Neills say they are grateful for the immediate help from the community. Marshalltown is offering its support to Winterset nearly four years after its own disaster. An EF3 tornado tore through Marshalltown in July of 2018, toppling the cupola of the Marshall County Courthouse and destroying homes and businesses. The mayor of Marshalltown says to this day he still gets choked up thinking about all the support they received from other communities, including those in Madison County. Marshalltown pledges to pay it forward and help Madison County in any way they can. From Madison County, that immense tornado barreled its way into Warren County. At 5 o'clock Saturday evening, KCCI Storm Chaser caught a glimpse of it as it crossed Interstate 35. Heavy rain and hail trailing along Are with it. The storm skirted the edge of Norwalk. Wood sent flying through the walls of buildings while some other happened. walls and buildings and were blown so down. Like Up next, the perspective from a young boy who saw it unfold from his own front yard. We will also follow the tornado's path out of Warren County into Polk County, where there is a lot of damage and plenty of support. Plus, we'll take you to southern Iowa, where another tornado destroyed homes and businesses and took a life. We'll hear from the Sheraton man who lost the only family member he had. And as we head to break, we want to remind you how you can help Iowa storm victims. You can find a list of organizations, nonprofits, and volunteer organizations helping people in this time of need on our homepage at kcci.com and on our free KCCI mobile app. Or you can use your smartphone to scan the QR code in the bottom right corner of your screen.
We are devoting this half hour to showing you how Iowans are restoring hope for each other after Saturday's catastrophic storms. And plenty more still needs to be done. We are sharing a list of resources, big and small, if you would like to help Iowans get back on their feet. You can find that information on the homepage of KCCI.com, the KCCI mobile app, and by scanning the QR code at the bottom of your screen, that will take you right to the list. The gigantic EF4 tornado that started in Madison County also tore through Warren County. In Norwalk, one family had a close call. They made it to the basement with just moments to spare. Ten-year-old Grayson Whedon tells us that he was playing football in his front lawn just before the storm rolled by. His family's backyard shed was flattened by the wind. Two pieces of wood flew through his bedroom window, but the tornado didn't damage his positive attitude. We were all kind of watching the storm happen, and then once they started seeing like it form and the debris fly, they we started running down into the basement. I'm not the saddest because I know that this can be like rebought, rebuilt. Volunteers showed up in droves over the past six days to help families around Norwalk clean everything up. From Norwalk, that storm skirted the southeastern corner of the city of Des Moines near Army Post Road and the Highway 65 bypass. Sky 8 got a view of the rooftops ripped off, the trees shredded, and the power lines down. The heart of Des Moines, however, was spared a direct hit. One couple came face to face with this tornado as it crossed the Highway 65 bypass. Take a look. Jacob Scott and his fiance Jennifer Marsh were driving just south of Des Moines when they saw the tornado, so they pulled over. But with no time to figure out what to do next, they stayed in the car. They held each other tight as that storm charged right at them. At that point, I'm setting my phone down, grabbing her to put her into my chest and trying to cover my face into her shoulders some way, somehow, just so we can be, you know, somewhat protected. It's not something I want to go through again. I can tell you that. We are relieved to tell you the couple is doing okay. The Iowa State Patrol, by the way, said the couple did the right thing. They hunkered down inside their car. Now, once the tornado crossed the Des Moines River, it passed near Runnels in the southeast corner of Polk County, and it destroyed buildings on the Tingley family's Century Farm. It's been in the family for six generations. The roof blew off their 11-month-old son's bedroom right around the time that he would have laid down for a nap. Everybody, oh nobody's hurt. We're all alive. It's it was crazy. dumb luck that that I mean that we she was here. gone to get get our older son. Um, she had her youngest with uh, with her. I mean, she'd been here another 20 minutes. It, it was her youngest nap, nap time. The family says despite the devastating damage, they are not focusing on what they lost. Instead, they're focusing on what they didn't lose, each other. Making the best of a bad situation is the attitude throughout Runnels. KCCI's Marcus McIntosh introduces us to a man who was outside feeding his animals when the storm hit, and he just barely made it to safety. I was able to jump this fence and hit the garage door button and more or less throw the dogs down the steps by the time I got inside. So that was kind of really close then. Yeah, like I said, I didn't even get my outside door put closed. Then came the sounds of the storm barreling overhead. Your tree branches hit the house, glass breaking, and it sounded almost like a D-11 dozer come by and just start destroying everything. When Fork was able to go outside, he saw the impression the storm left on his home with the force to flip his belongings in the air like paper. That is my camper up in the tree right there. From Sky 8, the damage is much more intense. We see the path of the storm that tore through the Fork's neighbor's homes first. He says the Sunday snowfall just adds insult to injury. It's gonna be a lot of damage and we're gonna be sleeping in a camper for the next couple months. This is Ryder Brown's grandparents' home of more than a decade, a few blocks at the most from the Forks. Brown says the community, theirs and others stepped up when neighbors needed them most. It's one of the things we love about Runnels and just small towns in general, you just have that, you know, that heart there. Thomas Fork says he and his wife are lucky, lucky to survive the storm and lucky their home and belongings were not completely wiped off the map. So I'm surprised it didn't do more damage to the interior than what it did. 
Marcus McIntosh with that story tonight. Now the tornado closed out its hour and a half of terror north of Newton, 70 miles from where it started in Madison County. Thankfully, it missed most of the city of Newton itself, but we found this damage at the TPI Composites building and at the beloved Valair Drive-In. The fence, the screen, the sign all ripped up. The owners say they appreciate everybody who has contacted them to try to help, but they're waiting for their insurance company to make an assessment before they let people know what their needs are. Up next, we will track the tornadoes that ripped across Lucas and Wayne counties in southern Iowa. That's where one life was lost and where businesses were destroyed, but still, people are moving forward. and we left the doors unlocked just if anybody else wanted to come in for shelter and so we were all like in the bathroom because that's the safest place of all like in the building and we were just right there with the kids and then all of a sudden it got all quiet and then it just felt like it was getting like demolished up upstairs and we were just crying and just praying that everybody was saved and uh -huh. I'm sorry, it's, I'm so emotional like I was telling you and we just had that feeling like our ears were plugged like when an airplane lands Four and months. all our ears got plugged and we were, that's when we got more scared and we knew it was on top of us I'm to and uh, we were just praying and, uh, and hoping that, it, that we were all going to be okay. Such emotional stories coming out of Saturday's storms. You just heard from the owner of the Country Cabins Motel just east of Sheraton. That was one of many places badly damaged from the EF3 tornado that hit Lucas County. That tornado was on the ground for 17 miles, 24 minutes in total. In that time, it destroyed homes, trailers, and livelihoods. 40-year-old Jesse Theron Fisher was killed in the tornado as it barreled through Red Haw State Park, not far from that Sheraton motel. KCCI's Amanda Rooker talked with Fisher's uncle. The two men took cover together when the tornado hit. Well, two Lucas County residents were living in this house when a fire tore through in January. They had no choice but to evacuate to Red Haw State Park. Jesse Theron Fisher and his uncle, Gary Smith, tried to take shelter in Red Haw State Park's shower room. But Smith says it was off season and the steel doors were locked. With a tornado coming, they huddled in their camper. Did you feel it hit? The wind was blowing hard and the camper was rocking a little bit. 
The next thing I knew, I was buried in rubble. The tornado tore right through. Gary climbed out from piles of broken tree limbs and sheet metal, searching for his nephew. And I found him laying on the ground. Legs kind of spread apart. His arms out like this, like somebody would lay down and try to make a snow angel. He was gasping for it. And I tried to do CPR on him. And every time I closed my eyes, that's all I could see. 40-year-old Jesse did not survive. I lost my nephew and my best friend. It's always been the two of you. Yep. We've always been together since the day he was born. Gary says it was Jesse that always took care of him, who helped him keep going in January when their house went up in flames. This week, the first time in 40 years, Gary woke up to life without Jesse. I thought I heard his voice this morning. <laughs> I thought it was just a nightmare, but I could have sworn I said, his voice is, hey, Gary, I'm here. Huh? And there was nobody there. For now, he's living in a motel room with no family, no home, no belongings, nowhere to turn. In Sheraton, Amanda Rooker, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's news leader. These stories are heartbreaking. Gary Smith is still recovering from minor injuries. A friend is raising funds to help him with funeral costs and other expenses. If you would like to help Gary and other Iowans who have suffered heartbreaking loss, a GoFundMe has established a whole page dedicated to fundraisers that have been started on its site that will benefit those folks. All the fundraisers listed have been verified by its trust and safety team. The link to this page can be found through the KCCI website and mobile app and by scanning the QR code at the bottom of your screen. A community staple in Sheraton also took a hard hit. It's the Soda Pop Saloon. Cindy Reyes says it was her dad's dream, a very special place where families and children of all ages could go for a fun night out. Now that special place is a pile of plywood and sheet metal. But Reyes says everybody's fine. The show will go on, starting with finding a temporary home to bring back the Soda Pop Saloon. The damage extends further south near the Missouri border. An EF2 started southeast of the Wayne County town of Allerton, grazed that small town, traveled northeast, damaging a few homes in Corridon before lifting seven and a half miles from where it started. Here is some of the damage in Corridon. Iron fences blown over, scraps of metal, shards of wood hanging from trees. Families we spoke with say the support of their community has helped make all the difference. We'll be right back. Among the stories of devastation and heartbreak, we are also seeing the very best of people coming together to help without even giving it a second thought.
Storm teammate meteorologist Jason Sudeiko volunteered his time to help people in Madison County. Here's what he says he noticed the entire time he was there. Not how can I help you, but I'm going to help you in every way possible. There were just people that would just bring food. They knew we were there, they heard we were there, and one guy just showed up with four boxes of pizza. And we were like, did you talk to anybody? He's like, oh, I heard you guys were here and I just wanted to help. So it was really that kind of mentality that just continued throughout the day. People, somebody made muffins, they'd bring the muffins in. You know, somebody else, you know, made a bunch of bagged lunches. Um, one of the churches did and brought those in for the volunteers as they were, so they could take them out as they were picking up debris. We have a list of ways that you can help people who have been impacted by this storm. It includes ways to donate your money or volunteer your time cleaning up debris or handing out meals and other things that are important. You can find it by going to kcci.com, downloading our free KCCI mobile app, or scanning the QR code in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. We appreciate you joining us for our special report on Iowa storm recovery. Before we go tonight, a final look at some of the most powerful images from last Saturday. Thank you for watching. Good night.